Nettlemead, one year later, has it changed? I don't even remember if we liked this the first time. I remember... <laughs> it was meh. You did not like it very much. I think I liked it more, but not as much as I wanted to like it. By the way, for anybody that asks how we store things, we store it just like this. This was just sitting on the floor in my closet. This is one of those swing, swing top. top lids, and you heard me open it. There was, I mean, the microphone is right there. There was no sound, no pop, no fizz, no nothing. This was done. And when we say stabilized, it was stabilized naturally. We didn't add anything to make it stabilized. Um, some people seem to think we do that off camera. Nope, nope. we really don't do it at all. Um, we don't lie. We don't make stuff up. We're so. full transparency yeah, here. <laughs> what you see in our videos is what we did to it, period. We do that on purpose so that you can see everything and actually understand the process as well as be able to replicate the process. So this is as it was one year ago and uh, it's stilled. There's no carbonation and um, I'm about to pour some. Now, when I was smells going through the closet of aging, I guess is what it is now, um, I noticed that we actually had two bottles of nettle mead in there. One that was like a six months delay, and then one that was the full year. And so we decided, yeah, we didn't need to do the six months, we'll just do the full year. It's because this one was so rough when we first made it that we didn't do an initial tasting. We were we actually put it off for a while and yeah. well we never got around to it because in the meantime we changed to a one year tasting routine and it just got put off and put off. So we're just gonna do the one year now. Alright, so first, color. Gorgeous. Looks like meat. It's it's what a mead should look like to me. It's got an amber color, the honey color. Now, to me, this this isn't me this is me plus like tea tones because it's not that well it is nettle tea yellow golden it's it's more oh see i like it it's got like, it's a very pretty it color. looks like honey colored okay me. okay oh that's right. why i like it because okay. it looks like a honey color okay i can i can agree to that um this is what we do guys we try to convince each other but when i was thinking what a mead should look like maybe mm what a mead in theory should look like but what just fermented honey looks like no it's more yellow than this but i do appreciate this color. okay yeah i can go with that yeah just straight up like a traditional mead wouldn't be this golden right. wouldn't be that yeah this looks like honey to me honey in a glass the aroma is definitely nettle forward but, but it's not as grassy. But I'm getting some of the honey notes in there, too. There's there's an herbal note, but it's not as grass. Like, it's not pure dried grass anymore. Not the greatest smell. Still not 100% convinced. It's still grassy, though. Yeah, like, I, I was trying to think... It's, it's not what I remember, but it's only marginally better. <laughs> We're really selling this one! <laughs> But hey, this is good for you. You know, that's the important thing. It's good for you. Well, we don't know how much of the goodness. Shh. <laughs> it's good for you. We don't actually know that. So no, we're not going to make that that claim. Are you ready for a short sip? Short sure. sip is to acclimate you to the, the shock of what a nettle mead might taste like. It's like 12.4 12 or something. 12.4. Yeah. So it's, it's got a decent amount of alcohol to it. Short sip is just just that. You get it in your mouth, get it down, just to get an indication of what it's like. Your initial tea concept was pretty accurate. It tastes a lot like tea. Yeah. If, if you ever cut your lawn <laughs> and you scoop up some of the grass clippings and put just them in water to get in your with, face. with like a spoon of honey, <laughs> about what this tastes like right now. <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> I'm not sure if I like this less now than I did a year ago. I don't know. I mean, think about it. This was the only brew that we said, we're going to wait six months to taste this. I mean, normally, we don't do that. It's like, oh, this is the initial tasting. And, you know, we're just going to... We said, we'll put this off six months. And then at the six-month point, we said, we're going to put this off another six months. So what does that tell you, you know, right off the bat? But anyway, it's um it's very grass forward. I definitely Okay, I just got goosebumps. When I get goosebumps, that's not a good sign. Um it's not nerves or anything like that. It's 
Oof. It's that kind of, you know, that flavor type thing. Okay, on the short sip, trying to find something to say. I definitely get grass. I get tea, and I get black tea, but in the not even in the good sense. I like straight black tea. I can drink straight black tea. This is harsh, even to me. Very it's, little. It's honey. the black tea, like if my dad made a cup of tea. Yeah, the way her dad makes tea. Let me explain. You know, they say steep three to five minutes. He sees that as days or something. He will literally let it sit till like the next day with a tea bag in it, and then drink it. Because he forgets, and then he goes outside, and he does some work, and then he's all hot and sweaty. So and he, he might to take a shower. And microwave it or something. Oh, oh I, yeah, my tea. And then he'll microwave it to heat it back up. I've and... seen him put two tea bags of different teas in oh, things yeah. and leave them yeah. sit for hours. But hey, if it makes him happy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not really picking on him. Just tad. that's the way he likes it. Um, to me, that's about what this might taste like with a little bit of so alcohol. So, Dad, at it. next time you come visit. You can have all the nettle meat because I think Terry would really appreciate this. Nettle. I think he might like it. Um, I'm afraid to do a long sip. I did a long sip and I survived. I'm still oh, okay. standing. All right. Well, here we go. Sitting. Surviving. In the mouth, without swallowing, it's okay. <laughs> but then you swallow and all the hurt just rushes forward. And it's Ugh. like... There's it's, no poker face in that one. It's like grass and oversteeped tea that got burnt. There's burnt coffee in there. I would swear there's burnt coffee in this. It's it's really weird, and I'm trying. It's just not good. <laughs> I'm trying to find. It's some just not good. Redeeming qualities, and I'm I'm not finding. I'm any. fairly certain it is not unhealthy to drink. Oh, no, no, no. Like, it's, it's not it's, toxic It's not anything. toxic. It's just not. There's nothing... It's very, very herbal. You yeah. know all those um, folk remedies where you make a, a poultice and you have to stick it underneath your tongue and keep it there and it's just awful, 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 but it does help you? That's what this tastes like. I'm going with the idea that the worse <laughs> something tastes, the better it must be for you. So this is probably really, really good for you. This is super healthy stuff. All right, so we've ripped this apart enough. Um, wow, I'm trying to think of what to say. I definitely get grass. It tastes like literally grass or straw mixed with black tea that sat for, and steeped far too long and burnt coffee. It That's literally what I'm getting with just the tiniest bit of honey. It's actually relatively sweet, believe it or not, but it's just got so many strong, harsh flavors. And that's what I was saying, in the mouth, it's actually pleasant. Texturally, it feels viscous enough. It's not too watery. If you forget the taste, yeah. It's a little velvety. I'm getting a little bit of the honey sensation. And I'm, I'm not getting all the, the displeasant things in the mouth. It doesn't occur to me... That there For are, science. I'm that there are again. things in here that I really strongly feel negative about until I swallow and then that's when I get the burnt and the grass and the it just it's it assaults the senses it just okay I've had bad scotch and bad whiskey before and I never made that face <laughs> <laughs> sorry but I'm just being honest here now do I feel like we did anything wrong when we made this no the only thing we might have done is we didn't use fresh nettles. That's the only thing I think could have happened. Or maybe we used too much drug. That is a possibility. Yeah, we I feel like we much. oversteeped the nettle. Yeah, yeah, it feels oversteeped. Too much nettle. Is this something that we're likely to revisit? No, I don't think so. There's so many other brews to make that this is just not one that I think I would go back and do again. I think what I might do for science is because we still have a, a rather hefty bag of nettles over there. Oh, I might drink nettle tea. I, I might make some metal tea and I might even throw in some other things with said nettle tea until I come up with a flavor profile that I'm like, oh, wait, wait. Well, this needs tons of citrus. And then or I'll share it with Brian. And if he's like, okay, I didn't get goose cup bumps that time, then maybe we'll revisit yeah. it. But I think it's going to take a lot of tweaking to get it to where our palates mm. appreciate it. Somebody out there is going to be 
drinking this with us and go, what are you guys talking about? This is awesome. Right. And more power to you. If you like this, I'm very happy for you. And I'm really not going to judge you for it because there's going to be somebody that does love this. I know people that drink nettle tea all the time and they love it and they think, yep. think it's great. There and are, they may really appreciate this. There are some teas like Makta and Oolong and I'm probably pronouncing them all wrong. I like Oolong. But I thought you didn't like Oolong. I thought it's it was... Matcha. Okay. I'm not a big fan. Okay. So, uh, and the reason why he doesn't like that is because it feels more grassy to him. And so th this just might be in that realm of flavor profiles of tea that he doesn't appreciate. And so yeah. transferring that into a mead, it's going to retain those flavor notes that he doesn't appreciate. It's and the so, oversteeped black tea thing for me. Right. So I With think... coffee. I, th I think if we could figure out a way to subdue that, but still retain some of the herb notes, like... I feel like there's something in there that is worthwhile. It's just all these other notes are, are bringing it down. Yeah. And I, I don't know. So do we want to give this a score now, then put it on ice and give it another score after? Yeah, let's do that because it, it always that confuses it's me. Yes. It's independent. We don't have to go back and forth. But before we do that, let's talk about food pairings. First, I would not want to eat this with food. Drink, I would not want drink to... it. Yeah, no. I wouldn't want to drink. I say that all the time. <laughs> I would not want to drink this with food. I would not want to put this in food. I would not want this with ham and eggs. I would not want this on a train. I would no, no. I just don't like this. I wouldn't. Not in a in box. Mode. Not with a fox. Not with socks, or rocks, or other things that rhyme rhyme with ox. ox. Anyway. Yeah, this is just not one that I would really want to drink, in all honesty. This isn't, I mean, you know what's coming. This ain't even a five. I wouldn't reach for it. I wouldn't drink it. I wouldn't cook with it. I, I don't I don't have a lot of use for it. So I'm hoping it's better on ice. But I do have a score for it. I'm ready. Now remember, our scoring system is this. One, possibly toxic. Wouldn't even give it to your worst enemy. Five, I would drink it. Might not be the first thing I reach for, but... If it was there, i go, oh, yeah, I'll drink that. Ten, absolutely spot on, perfect, love it, would reach for it above other things. Okay, that's the easiest way to say it. One, two, three. Three. One point five. <laughs> I believe that is the lowest score we have ever given a mead. <laughs> that means it's just slightly above toxic. Okay, I'll, I'll justify my 1.5. <laughs> Let me justify my 1.5. I have said already this tastes like burnt coffee, which I am a coffee person. I like coffee. I appreciate coffee and I know how to make good coffee. And you can even take less than superb coffee beans and make a good tasting cup but of coffee. But burnt coffee insults him. Burnt coffee is an insult it's, to coffee making. It's a you have to insult. screw up so bad to make it burnt that you are just doing a disservice to all coffee makers everywhere. The fact that that flavor is in here is just an affront to my whole being, okay? The oversteeped tea thing. I grew up drinking Lipton black tea and hated every second of it, but that's what we were given as kids when we were sick, and it normally was steeped too long. So that flavor reminds me of being sick. So let's combine reminding of being sick with burnt coffee. And then add in steeped grass cuttings. <laughs> so you have the trifecta of nastiness here, okay? This just is not good. I, I, I'm trying not to be too cruel because this is something we made. We did put a lot of time and effort into it. We did the research and I know a couple of our mods helped us and things like that. And maybe I didn't take their advice somewhere along the way. I'm not blaming them because it's not their fault. We did this. I take full responsibility because Derek probably didn't have a lot of input on the actual ingredients and recipe because usually I put these things together and she goes, I don't know about that. Or maybe she didn't this time. I don't know. Or I'll do a bunch of research and come up with a recipe and be like, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, I was the high man on the totem pole this time. Yay me! I gave it a three simply... It's still not very good. <laughs> simply because of the in-the-mouth sensation is not horrible. That's why I didn't give it a one. Um, so in the mouth, I'm like, okay, I know this is good stuff. Nettles are supposed to be really good. I should be liking this. It's, it's doing good. It's fine. It's fine. Everything is fine. And then I swallow it as... Ah! So that's what kept me as high as a three. There you go. So 
we're going to put this on ice, which means just putting an ice ball in that glass right there. We're going to pour, well, I'm probably just going to pour from our glasses and put a little bit more in there. Notice we haven't gone back for seconds. <laughs> um, and we're going to see if this improves at all. Hopefully you're still watching. All right, so in an effort to not waste any mead, I'm just going to pour these glasses right over the ice ball. In case you haven't noticed, there's lots of times that Brian starts talking and I'm doing something weird. It's because he doesn't realize that I have a ridiculous mass of hair and I have to circumnavigate light stands and benches and refrigerators and I like your I hair. get stuck on things and so I'm trying to settle <laughs> and he starts talking and I'm like, meh. So I'm I am a complete spaz. I was almost said I'm not a complete spaz, but let's be honest, I am a complete spaz. But but we we need to to learn a little bit about mm -hmm. go ahead and have dramatic a taste. Before, pause. before it gets too watered oh. down. Go ahead and have oh, a taste. Oh, great! I'm looking forward to this. We do have whiskey stones on the way. They're just not here yet. I'm kind of sure the dilution might be a, uh, an effective thing this time. I'm gonna have a little bit more for science. The things we do for you guys. All right, so. The first thing that I noticed on ice is that, cold. is that remember, <laughs> I'm going to punch you, <laughs> remember how I said in the mouth it's fine and I don't get that weirdness till the end when I swallow? Well, the ice says, hey, weirdness, just come right on in. It's oh, fine. Yeah. And so you get it all up front now. I, I'm going to change our rules on scoring. I think we're going to go with quarter points. But it's not... It's not as bad as getting it all at the end. It's just you're getting more of that flavor up front now. Which, I think the ice did what ice does. It tones if, down flavors. If you like this. You may really like it on ice. Then you might really like it on ice because you get more of that flavor up front. But if you don't like this, the ice isn't going to help. I'm sorry. I, see, I have a little bit of a different take. <laughs> I think the ice helped it a little bit. It's not quite mm. as discordant. It's not quite as jarring on ice. It does take it down a little bit. Maybe if you left the ice ball in your mouth for about five minutes and numbed your tongue <laughs> and then tasted it, it'd be even better. But as just it is... chop your head off, then drink it, and no, it's No, we don't want to suggest fine. chopping heads off. That's oh, just not a good thing. Right. Don't do that. Um, but I do think, in all seriousness, it did help it a little bit. Um, all right. I'm going to be brave. Yeah. It, See, this is hard because I really don't appreciate this. And when you don't like something, it's really hard to find anything. Whoa. You can have all of that. Um, when you don't like something, it's really hard to say anything constructive or positive about it. Um, you obviously know I don't really like this much at all. It, Man, it's just so hard to say anything nice. The color is wonderful. <laughs> But yeah, as you drink it, even on ice, that kind of burnt tea coffee thing is up front now. And the grassy note stays with you throughout. Let me just have a small taste. I think part of the problem here, and I'm just going to be philosophical because, you know, is that alcohol is a foreign entity to the human body. And so when you put it in the human body, the human body sends all those signals to your brain and your brain goes WTF and tries to put a label on that. And it has no frame of reference. So it's, it's this searching. This does not taste like chicken. It's searching, it's searching, it's searching. And so it's like, okay, memory databank. And then there's all the memories. And so Brian has burnt coffee, bad. Oh, there's, there's the, yeah, it's burnt coffee. Let's feed that to him. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb and make a statement here. If our ancestors who made mead made mead that tasted like this, we wouldn't be drinking mead today. <laughs> Let's just say that. They put meat in the basque sometimes. And I bet you it tasted better than this. Oh. This, is, this is just not good, guys. So I'm thinking because of the things we're getting from this equates not to pleasant memories that perhaps that would be an issue. But if we had our favorite grandmother would always burn the coffee, but she was so sweet about it and always put extra sugar and cream in it so it wasn't so bad, then we might be like, oh, it's like grandma, and we might like it. Or... My grandmother never served me coffee. Or 
Just thinking about if it. one of our favorite chores was mowing the yard because we okay, got who has extra, a favorite chore we got mowing the yard extra bonus points for mowing the yard or we we got to see our our super secret crush when we mowed the yard you and i have some seriously different or, ideas on chores or some other trigger associated with mowing the yard that was extra pleasant then that might be like, oh, it smells like grass. Oh, I have all these wonderful memories. And so that would bump it up. And Brian's being a negative sourpuss over here. But you, I think she you... She's doing a wonderful job of rationalization. I think I your will. understanding about what I mean I totally is that mean. most people mowing the yard is a chore. Blech, don't like it. Done. Over steep tea reminds Brian of when he was sick. Who likes being sick? I don't know anybody who likes being sick. Perhaps there's somebody who likes being sick, but... Also, mowing the lawn yeah. was a punishment for me. Yeah, so, than so bad, chill. bad. Burn coffee, insult to his whole psyche. Yeah, bad. So that's why I was saying if, if you have a connection to these things or you get a different flavor in here that has triggers a happy memory, then this might be good. Like if the scent or the taste or the connection with what we're saying is grass, maybe you interpret as moss and you imagine your favorite hikes Nobody in the woods. moss. And you <laughs> trigger your favorite, you know, then it's gonna be like, oh, it's like a walk in the woods. And if this reminded me of a walk in the woods, I'd be like 8.5 at least. Uh, I totally but, see where you're coming but from. But that's not, what but that's I'm not the experience getting. we're getting from this. And, <laughs> and <clears throat> Brian is making fun of me and laughing at me, and that's what 11 years together will do for you. But 11 years tomorrow. We don't like licorice, and we know some people really, really love licorice. So if this yeah. tasted like licorice as well as all those other notes, that would just be a knockdown for it. it would be I'd give it a 0.5 negative if there was licorice taste zero. in this. Um, I'd be wondering where the heck it came from. Yeah. <laughs> But to someone else, that might be a positive. Yeah, and possible. so that's what I'm we trying did, to say here. I did here. say somebody may actually love this. Yes. And to that person, we're not ridiculing you or no, your taste at all. No. Everybody has different tastes. This no. is just not in our taste wheelhouse. Not yep. even remotely. Yep. Um, I do see some redeeming qualities to it. But I think, as was stated, we oversteeped and we may have overdone the dry nettles. So it is entirely possible that those things are coming through, but it's coming through so much more strongly than I ever thought it would. Oh, yeah. Like, usually, oh, yeah, well, maybe a little bit or a little bit. No, this is, like, way beyond a little bit. And this that's, is, that's this something is incredibly common serious. that we come up with when we're dealing with these herb infusions into our meads that we've never used Finding before that the we're right not familiar with. It's always so it's like, hard. like, how much do you put? And if you go out into the internets and try to see what other people Especially do. Especially when it's fresh versus dry. The range is, The like difference is amazing tremendous. because a fresh nettle is very different than a dried nettle. And, you know, apparently a lot of the, even the good qualities of it dissipate when you dry it. So yeah. this probably didn't have much of the good properties already. Yeah. And then the flavors were vastly different because it was dried and who knows how long it sat dried. Yeah. So that right there was like, pfft, we're shooting in the dark to try to, to do this. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people like to, you know, make brews five and six times before they show them and that kind of thing. And that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. I actually applaud them for that. Oh, sure. Um, we like to kind of shoot from the hip a little bit and give you an idea of what it's like and our experiences along the way. Yeah. Plus, our show is about teaching you how to make mead, not about how to make this specific mead necessarily, but how to brew in general. So, you know, hey, here's what we did and here's what didn't work and here's what did work. So much better to me than saying, okay, here's a mead and it's perfect. It's awesome. What, what did you learn from that? You know, instead, here's why th this is bad and here's why it's bad. <laughs> not because we did a brew thing wrong. There's right. no methodology that's wrong. This is drinkable. This is, you can drink this and get drunk from it, get a buzz from it, and, and some people may actually enjoy this. To us, it's not our taste, but there's nothing actually wrong with it. I mean, you can drink this. It's not, it's no more unhealthy than any other meat. Let's say that. I can't say that it's healthy because 
no alcohol is healthy, but it's no more unhealthy or hurtful than any other alcoholic beverage yeah. would be. Okay. So that's something I really want to make clear. And I know we're doing some backtracking here, but I just like to be, you know, upfront and transparent with you guys. We like to show stuff that didn't work out just as much as we like to show stuff that did. Now, if it's something that we made a huge mistake, we're going to teach you guys what we did wrong to help fix that. In this case, yeah, we probably oversteeped and used too much. And it was dried versus versus fresh because every person we spoke to used fresh. So I was trying to translate into dried. Right. And it doesn't translate very well. Right. As this shows. Um, nettle does grow here. I just don't have a reliable location that I could go and forage. Yeah, it we have myself. a lot of cars and highways. Um, we are in a city. So. Yeah. And if you are a forager and you do it frequently, you know that you want to avoid areas that perhaps could get pesticides or some mm -hmm. unwanted almost runoff. everything here gets pesticides. And yeah, it's, it's hard to find that. Um, but are, do we have a score for this? See that last one, I don't know if it's more watery. It was like, As oh, it waters down, it's probably way. better. Yeah. I want to try it watered down. <clears throat> Didn't help. It's okay. I may be exaggerating a little bit, but when it was, I, I'm not getting the weird sensations and making as much bad faces <laughs> now that it's cold as I did earlier. So that's why I say it's got to be slightly better because it's not affecting me physically. Like I could not control my facial expression. Okay. <laughs> so muscles, muscles. Yeah. I'm going to say it's slightly better. So I have a score. Are you ready? Sure. One, two, three, three. two. I'm sticking with three. Right. It's a two. It went from a one and a half to a two. It's still, I wouldn't reach for this. I wouldn't drink it. Um, to me, this is, it's not undrinkable by any stretch of the imagination, but to me, it's not something I would ever want to drink again. Um, but if you were on that, you know, dare show where we dare you drink this thing. Oh, sure. I'd drink the whole bottle. I'd be like, oh yeah? Watch this. It's not this. unsafe to drink it. You know, there's nothing unsafe about it. I just don't particularly care for it. Wait for the face. Nope, she's not going to do it. No See, face. She's she's good at this. She doesn't have that. In, she doesn't have that involuntary reflex thing. <laughs> you know that kind of thing. But anyway, I think we've ripped this meat apart <laughs> enough for one day. Um, we do have other videos to make today. So um, if you've stuck this way through, thank you so thank much you. for watching. Thank and you. no, most of our meads don't suck this bad. <laughs> most of them are actually pretty good. We just like to change it up once in a while and show you that we're just being honest. And uh, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, look up. There's another video up there. You might like that one too.